All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at the new and improved High Fleet Leviathan. This game has been updated for 10th edition, which is less than one week away. And I hope you're excited. This game has been broken down into two steps. The first to get your models on the table and ready for your first game. And the second, we're gonna be elevating it beyond Tabletop Plus. All of the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get into it. All right, we're gonna be starting off with a bit of Harvester Flesh. I'm gonna apply this all over the skin. I'm just showing you that it can be done with a brush, but if you're lazy like me, you can definitely do this with an airbrush. Once you have all of the skin tone down, you should have something that looks like this. We're then gonna come in with some Screamer Pink. I've thinned this down quite a bit with some water. You can see how translucent it is over my nail. I'm just applying this all over the skin. We're using this to tint the color of the raised areas and then allowing it to pull in the recesses. We're then coming in with some Harvester Flesh and I'm using this to establish the main volumes again. So picking out the musculature in the shoulders, the arms, all of the raised areas where the wash didn't settle. Doing my best to ensure that the Screamer Pink is still um, visible in the recesses and not covering up any of that detail. So I'll maybe take one or two passes of the Harvester Flesh over the Screamer Pink. Harvester Flesh is actually quite a transparent color so it doesn't have the best coverage. So I'll probably take you two passes in all honesty. When it comes to the tail, we're focusing on bringing out those raised areas along the side and then feathering out towards the tip. Always pulling the pigment towards the tip of the tail because that's where you want the most pigment and the most saturation. We're also taking this opportunity to highlight parts of the gun. We want the gun to almost look like it's incorporated into the body this time. So I'm using it to sort of highlight towards the butt of the gun and around like where the eye is or where that wee nodule is because it helps just to give that impression that it's kind of transitioning towards the front of the gun or towards the magazine. So now I'm taking a mix of Harvester Flesh and Screaming Skull, roughly about 50-50 here, and using it to start picking out some more of the details within the skin. So picking out some more of those raised areas, ensuring that I leave some of the Harvester Flesh visible to start creating those transitions and those gradients up towards our higher values. In areas around the hand where there's a lot of like recess detail, I'm uh, making sure to leave quite a lot of the Screamer Pink visible just for that extra boost of contrast in those areas. So in areas around the face, you can really drive that contrast. There's a lot of deep recesses, a lot of high spaces. There's a lot of room here where you can play around with the different values that we're creating with our mixes and with the colors that we're using. Again, as we get towards the tail, I'm picking out those details of those wee air vents. Um, I had no idea what they were until the other day when someone told me that they're air vents and not just additional, um, well, I think you know. But yeah, we're always pulling the pigment towards the tail, towards the tip of the tail, picking out those edge highlights along the side of the tail and drawing all of that high value pigment towards the tip of the tail, just for that boost in value and saturation in those areas. So I'm now coming in with some pure Screaming Skull and I'm using this just to highlight the upper areas of all of the places that we previously highlighted, leaving that 50-50 mix and the Harvester Flesh visible as I build up these highlights. Focusing on creating those volumetric highlights and a smooth finish over the skin, we want this to appear quite soft for the most part because we want it to look quite fleshy, quite organic, quite natural. So you know, play around with the finish play around with the highlights, choose your placement, and uh, just continue to work through the model. Again, you'll see I'm highlighting just less of the tail each time, drawing all of that pigment towards the tip of the tail. 
Once your skin is all done, it should look something like this. It's almost like a raspberry ripple ice cream whenever you look at it now. Uh, but you've got that nice deep recess shade and those super bright highlights towards the top of those muscles. They're then coming in with some Nigroth Night and applying that all over the carapace. So we're making sure we get a nice even coat here and because we're applying it over the lighter base tone, we get a higher saturation in the color. It appears to be more vibrant than going over black. So after two coats of the Nagroth Knight, it should look something like that. Then a bit of a bad in black, we're just going to coat all of the, the nails, the talons, the hooves, the claws, the teeth, all of the extra uh, armor parts, and then also the carapace that's on the gun. In the box art, they've done it as black as well, so we're just going to follow that for this tutorial. So again, it may take one or two passes for you to get a nice even coat over this, but you want to make sure you've got good saturation, good coverage, and a nice even base that we can work up to in our highlights. We're then going to take some of the Screamer Pink and we're going to apply this to the remaining details. So that's the tongue and then those tubes that connect into the gun, along with that wee eye or the wee nodule or wee gem or whatever it is in the middle of the gun. And once that's all done, you should have something that looks like this. Now this is definitely right up there with uh, tabletop quality. If you had 20 of these on the table, they would look banging. But we're now going to elevate it. So we're coming in with a thin glaze of a bad and black. And I'm putting this into the recesses of the carapace. So I'm working from about, I guess, 75% of the carapace, trying to cover that with my glaze or leaving 25% of the carapace with the purple visible and then applying the black glaze over the rest of it. Hopefully that made sense. But as you can see, uh, we're just working down each of the carapace panels, pushing all of that pigment in towards the recesses to create those darker values and those shadow tones in those areas. Now this will likely take two passes, I'm gonna say. If you want to do another one just so you have a smoother transition, three isn't going to hurt. But I wouldn't spend too much more time on it. Obviously on your bigger nids, spend a wee bit more time because they're going to be a lot more striking. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. So coming in with some Nagroth Knight, we're going to start to edge highlight each of the panels. So aiming for all of those sharp edges and along the areas where it connects to the skin. We're then going to start to add in some additional texture by pulling some lines across the flat panels of the carapace. This helps to create some noise, some texture, some information within these areas and makes your nids a bit more interesting. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm using the tip of my brush to start the line and then applying slightly more pressure as I pull towards the edge widening the line and creating a more bold impression with the Nagroth Knight. I'm repeating that process with the Xerius Purple, catching the edge, making sure I have a nice clean crisp edge highlight around all of the carapace and all of those sharp edges within the shapes and then using again the tip of my brush to start drawing a nice thin line and applying slightly more pressure as I get towards the edge. This allows me to create more texture, more variation, and more information within this space. And as I get closer and closer to the edge, I'm getting, my lines are getting closer together. So it creates a more saturated color. We're now going to take some Emperor's Children and create about a 50-50 mix with our Xerius Purple and Emperor's Children and repeat that process, catching that edge highlight that runs all the way down the center of the carapace, catching the edges around each of the carapace plates and then building up those lines again. Using shorter strokes this time, working closer towards the edge of the carapace and building up that color. Introducing more noise, more distortion, more visual confusion to create smoother transitions and more information within the carapace. 
once you get into the flow of doing these lines it actually becomes quite easy and almost quite relaxing. It does take a wee bit of practice to get the brush control down but I do recommend that you spend a wee bit of time just practice it on a bit of paper or practice it on another model um, but it really does add to the finish of your nids and to the finish of this scheme. And your lines do not need to be perfect here as well. Creating some irregularity or some variance within your panels just helps add to the fact that these are all organic beings. They're all differ a wee bit. There's some abnormalities. There's some that have more pigmentation, less pigmentation. So just enjoy the process. Have some fun creating this texture and creating these intricate patterns within your models. So I'm using a size 2 Series S from Artis Opus here because it has a larger belly and holds more paint, meaning I can pull more lines. I also think I've added some more uh, Emperor's Children into the mix here. and I'm just going back, repeating the highlighting process, getting my brightest points to come through in the carapace. And then just to finish it all off, I'm coming in with some pure Emperor's Children, hitting all of those bright points, all the brightest areas or sharpest areas within the carapace with the pure Emperor's Children just to create some more definition and some more structure within the shapes. In these larger areas just over the shoulder I'm just adding in a wee bit more colour just to make it a wee bit more exciting in some places and again just around the face to try and help bring that focus towards the front of the model. So once your carapace is all said and done, it should look something like this. I think this looks great. I'm really, really happy with how the carapace turned out on this. So when you get to this stage, definitely share some pictures with me. Drop them in the Discord. I want to see how your carapace turned out. So now we're coming in with the mix of a bad and black and screaming skull. And we're going to use this to build up the highlights within the black parts of the carapace, the claws, the teeth, and all of those other areas. Again, the reason that we're using Screaming Skull and not white for this is because we've used Screaming Skull in the model and this just creates more harmony and more continuity within the scheme. But we're treating this the same way that we did the carapace. We're introducing lines, texture, distortion, some noise to help smooth out these transitions and create more information within the panels, drawing out that texture that's been modeled into the miniature. So on the front of the gun, we're pulling towards the barrel and then at the back of the gun we're pulling all of our lines towards the butt of the gun. So now I've just mixed in some more Screaming Skull, continuing to highlight up each of the sections, drawing my lines towards the sharpest point of the claws, towards the base of the hoof, continuing to bring in those lines and introduce that texture. And then whenever I get to the gun, we're drawing in all those sharp, quick lines, the same as we did on the carapace, along with some edge highlights. And again, we're pulling our lines towards the barrel of the gun and then towards the butt of the gun. This just helps create a bit more contrast in this area and brings the light to two different areas, towards the front of the gun and then around the face. And then finally, I'm using this mix to highlight up the teeth, just you know, grabbing each of them, making sure the ones at the front are nice and bright. And then we're taking, again, a wee bit more Screaming Skull into our mix and just repeating the process, just further accentuating that, those striations and those lines that you had introduced into each of the sections. Highlighting up the teeth and highlighting up the gun. Following the same process, grabbing those edge highlights, creating that nice, sharp, distinct edge to each of our carapace panels and then pulling in slightly smaller lines this time. So to finish off the gun, I wanted to darken down the magazine and towards the front of the gun a bit more. So I've taken the Screamer Pink, thinned this down again into somewhere pretty much a glaze consistency that we used on the body at the start, but I'm just making a couple of extra passes towards the front of the gun and towards the bottom of the magazine. Maybe an additional two or three passes just to really build up that saturation and that concentration of color. And then I'm taking some Harvester Flesh here and just creating a bit more distinction around those vented areas and around the base of the magazine and the front of the barrel just to give it a wee bit more structure and a wee bit more shape. Then we're taking some pure Screaming Skull and repeating that process.
So now we're going to bring in some Katie and Flesh Tone. That's where things get a wee bit interesting, maybe a wee bit weird initially, but it all makes sense towards the end. So I'm taking a mix of the Katie and Flesh Tone with a very small amount of our Screamer Pink in there just to help soften out these transitions as I start to highlight up the additional details within the gun. So we're looking to grab those tubes that connect to the arm and then also that wee eye nodule thing in the center of the gun. Using this to highlight up the tongue as well, we're gonna catch that edge and then towards the fold, we're gonna bring in some more additional light to try and create a bit of a shine or a glossy look to the tongue. Being sure to leave the Screamer Pink in the recesses though, because it's gonna to help to build upon the effect that we're looking for. And then we're just gonna highlight up those vented areas or those ridges within the gun as well. So now I'm taking some Katie and Flesh mixed with a small amount of Screamer, I'm oh sorry, of Screaming Skull and repeating the highlighting process, trying to cover slightly less area, focusing my highlights more towards the edges and the ridges, you know, making the details more structured and bringing more attention to the shape. It's the same with the tongue as well. I'm focusing my highlight along the edge to bring shape to the tongue and then just over that ridge, just where I'm gonna indicate that there's a bit of a shine. And then same with events, just making sure to highlight those up. Last but not least, we're coming in with some pure Screaming Skull here, repeating the same process as we did in the last step, but just covering slightly less area, focusing on where I want the brightest points to be and bringing attention again to the structure and the shape of these connectors, nodules, bits and bobs across the model. And then we're really focusing on that crease in the tongue now, really drawing attention to where we want that shine point to be. So now taking some Cassandra Yellow. So we're gonna be applying this over the sections that we just highlighted. One, to bring in a complementary color to the model, make it pop, make it look a wee bit more interesting, but also because yellow over pinks actually creates this nice deep sort of orange color and creates some really, really nice contrast with those super bright tones that we introduced before. So this is very similar to the idea of like just glazing or treating this as a filter layer to tint the colors on top and the colors underneath. We're preserving all of that highlighted detail that we did beforehand. So you can see the effect that it's having on this. It's uh, like really popping. Um, I think the, the yellow on top of this looks really, really nice. I think it's a really welcome addition to this scheme. Just makes it that wee bit more interesting. So for the eyes, I'm just taking some Screaming Skull and applying a small dot towards the back of the eyes. Just bring some attention towards the detail. And then coming back in with my Xander Yellow and applying a small filter over the top. And that's pretty much all I'm doing for the eyes. Last but not least, we're just gonna highlight up one or two more sections of those yellow parts just to bring that shine effect in towards the tongue and just to re-establish some more of those smaller details within the gun, just to make it really stand out and really pop. So here he is, all said and done. Only thing left to do is put him on the base, stick him on the spinning thing and get him in for the close up. I think this is a great rendition of the High Fleet Leviathan. I think the more saturated tones make the model look a bit more menacing, make it look a bit more deadly. The introduction of the yellow kind of gives you that venomous, poisonous look as well. But overall, great scheme, super fun to paint, really like those saturated pinks, those saturated purples, and I hope you have enjoyed this. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed project. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All the links can be found below in the description.